And the truth is, this is what we're facing. Uh, this is our future. For some reason, uh, the people in power don't seem to be able to tell when people are trying to take what you got. This land does not belong to them. I understand that we're built off of immigration. But this isn't immigration. That's invasion. There's a big, big difference. A huge difference in what we're facing off again. And the response from the White House? Tragic. It's criminal. Especially from Corrine Jean-Pierre. Has the president seen that dramatic video of migrants surging past uh, National Guardsmen in Texas and in El Paso? I mean, look, uh, I have not spoken to the president about that video. Uh, what I can say uh, is this, uh, you know, I really truly believe that's a question for, uh, you know, the Republican governor of Texas, right? This is, this is something that he should address, that she should actually speak to. The president has worked with Congress in the Senate, as I just spoke to, about getting uh, an immigration bill done, uh, making sure that uh, making sure that we deal with the border challenges uh, that we see uh, that we're now seeing, and you have a a, a governor of Texas who has continued to politicize this. Have you ever noticed? No matter what really happens, uh, the Biden administration is always just pointing fingers. And the thing I've learned is, everybody that points fingers, it's probably their fault. They're probably to blame. Um, essentially, what they're saying is um, we throw up our hands, you know, before, you know, the Supreme Court basically gave permission to Texas to lock up illegal aliens. After they gave permission, they threw up their hands. Essentially, it just looks like the federal government, controlled by uh, Joe Biden, doesn't want to do anything about the border. They're okay if you just cross our border illegally, come into our country, Take what we got. It feels like they're allowing an invasion to happen. It's derelict of duty. These people have to go. They gotta go. Also now lost on me. I think there were 38,000 Republicans that showed up and voted for Donald Trump or something like that in Chicago. So, you know, since we're if we're, if we're trying to draw some conclusions and you all want some other, you know, analytics you might want to discover, um, that might be something to, to, to look into because there's... I'll just say it. There's a good chance that that played a part in this referendum. So the same people who who want to see Donald Trump to become mayor, to become not sorry, mayor, to become president. You know, sometimes I do feel like he wants my job, but um, who wants to be president again? Uh, those are the same voters who voted for him, and the same voter, voters where you look at where there were more nos, they were concentrated there. The Democratic Party is really good at passing blame. Don't get me wrong; Republicans have passed enough blame on to other people. But the Democratic Party is really good at it. Liberals are, are massive, you know, can kickers. Just shove it to somebody else. I mean, when it's blatantly their fault. Uh, Mayor Brandon Johnson is saying that this is MAGA country. This is, uh, you know, it's Trump supporters in, in, in the south side of Chicago that's not voting for, uh, uh, for whatever reform he's voting for. Your homeless policy... For illegal immigrants in the face of your actual U.S. homeless population, these people just seem to hate us. They hate us. They hate people of the United States of America. They hate the own citizens of the United States of America. We're all getting replaced. Black, white, male, female, it doesn't matter. In the next 10 years, a lot of our votes won't matter. The demographic shift will just basically make every U.S. citizen a minority at this point that this is sustainable this ghetto ass planet stresses me out so much that i feel like my heart is going to explode they've raised the retirement age and want us to work until the day that we die they're buying all the homes it's apparently illegal to be homeless during a time where living costs are outrageous it's also apparently illegal to feed homeless people like what the fuck man people are getting absolutely bulldozed on their taxes we have to pay taxes on everything that we buy taxes already come out of our paychecks and then we have to pay more taxes at the end of the year our tax dollars are funding mass unalivings everywhere and for what resources that they would rather steal than ethically source zero gun control so good luck making it home alive from anywhere that you go it's just a risk that you'll have to take so that your children can receive a half-ass education where they now want to shove religion down their throats while you go to a job that barely pays your bills women no longer have bodily autonomy in our
I was going to say that we're rapidly reaching the point of reintroducing slavery, but the reality is slavery never ended. It only evolved and we're all fucking slaves. I can barely focus on being a mother because I have to spend every moment of my life focused on how much money I can make. Meanwhile, it's Taylor Swift this and Kim Kardashian that. I don't fucking care, bro. I just want some quality of life. You know, some of these uh, points I actually agree with this donut about. Some I don't. Obviously, the body autonomy thing. Uh, allowing abortions, I, I don't agree with because, you know, honestly, that's one of our own problems because you, now you're taking away the negotiating power of U.S. citizens by allowing way too many illegal immigrants in. But just the cost of everything, the, the, the money, the pay, it, the, the way the country is controlled financially, I agree with all that. But the problem is you, I don't want to make judgments, but you seem like the type of person that probably voted in the wrong people. You know who you voted for. You know what you did. You understand that the people that you put in power and and, and placed at top and, and you went out there and protested for and saying, we need these people. I stand with her or I stand with him. You know what blue that you stand for, right? We all understand that, that you're a Democrat. So let's, let's not fool ourselves. You were part of the problem. What was your reason for getting into the industry? I actually went to church three times a week. I worked my way up the corporate ladder. I was five years as a business development manager. I've done the traditional life. I've done all of that and it did not serve me. So your traditional values are for sale. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you're saying that you were a traditional woman, but the money just wasn't right. So you sold out on that for modernity, right? So you could get that good, cool casholi, right? Actually, it's not easy money, despite the public's But it's idea. a lot more money, isn't it? It's how much ever effort you put into it. There yeah, are, but it's a lot more are... money you're making than at your corporate job, huh? Absolutely. What it is, is that traditionalism for you is just a matter of price, isn't it? No, I have traditional values, and that is that. That doesn't yeah, mean... Yeah, as long as somebody can pay for them. <laughs> First off, this is a clip from the Whatever podcast. Um, specifically, uh, Andrew Wilson of The Crucible. If you have never seen any of his videos, go check him out. He makes such good points that it kind of boxes most people in. He debates because he's, he's a blood sport debater. I mean, God's great. But this just shows you... Uh, that even more and more in society, we are allowing women in, in, in these feminist views, controlled by the top. Let's be honest, it's it's all brought to you by the top to basically weaken men. The fact is, if you weaken men, you weaken society. And if you weaken society, that's control. There's no basis in morality. Even if you take religion out of it, the moral standing that saying that doing OnlyFans or pornography or any of these other, you know, basically it looks like naturally democratic ideas, we know they're not good. We know in modernity, in modern day, they don't work out. They fail. I mean, look at society now. We're going to face a downfall in society in the next 10 or 15 years. These women that are, that, that are going through society now, OnlyFans and uh, porn and people who are not living the nuclear family we're going to essentially not be able to replace our own population and there's two options either you really enforce the younger population to have six kids or more which is very unlikely or you bring population from the outside which is unstable in itself because if their population birth rates lower then it's meaningless Honestly, we need more control, you know, Christian-based control over our government. There needs to be stricter limits on all of this. And before anybody gets in the comments and tells me, Well, you're a sinner. You're a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. But even Jesus tells you to go out and sin no more. Not saying we're ever going to be free of sin 100%. But our attempt to be free of sin as much as possible... That's a win. That's a W in my book. And as we can see in our society, it's not really working out in our favor now, is it? This is the biggest reason that women stop having sex with their husbands. And I know what's coming in the comment section and I don't care. Because I have to spit the truth. 
And yes, I do know what I'm talking about. I know, Stuart, you're going to comment and say, well, maybe it's this, this, and this, and you're going to get kind of mad about what I have to say, but here's the deal. I have a doctorate in social psychology. I've spent my entire adult life studying romantic relationships, the science of romantic relationships, both studying the science as well as publishing in the science. And so I am very well versed in this topic, not to mention that I've seen thousands of clients and heard from thousands of women about why they won't have sex with their husbands. So, you know, Joe, if you know better, for sure put it in the comments, but I think I have some credibility. And if this is a problem in your relationship, you might want to humble yourself and take a seat and hear what I have to say. The primary reason why women stop having sex with their husbands is because they don't feel emotionally safe. And the reason that they don't feel emotionally safe is because their attachment needs are not being met inside of their relationship. Attachment needs are our deepest needs inside of a romantic relationship. And if those things are not fulfilled, we will not feel emotionally safe. And especially for women, when there is a lack of emotional safety, they start feeling very unsafe giving their bodies to their partner and they start to feel extremely unattracted to their partner. Like they simply can't get physically turned on by their partners anymore. Lady, I don't give a shit what your specialty is. I don't care about how many of your degrees. What you're basically saying is do exactly what I say whenever I want it, when I want it, and maybe I'll think about not cheating on you. Maybe I think about staying in a committed relationship with you. It's always one-sided. You notice it's always about what the men aren't doing. You notice that she didn't never once bring up about, you know, women are to blame for whatever goes on in a marriage or in a relationship. It falls upon the man to keep the relationship together. I understand that, then, you know, you're going to have smart asses say, well, you know, the man's the leader in the relationship. But that also means that the woman doesn't have free will. Of course they do. They're choosing. So if they want to choose to leave, fine. But that doesn't automatically mean that it is the man's fault. This is a clip from Ohio Representative Ismail Mohammed. Now, there's a longer clip out there. You can watch it for yourself. Basically, his whole speech is in Somali. This man was elected to the House of Representatives of Ohio. He said in this speech that his main concern is the well-being and welfare of Somalia. And this is what I've said probably in 90% of the videos I've ever made. It feels like our society is going down a drain. We allow things like this to happen. Uh, everybody says inclusion this, inclusion that. We don't have to be inclusive 100% all the time. We don't have to be inclusive to foreign invaders or people who don't have our best interests at heart. We've been basically, as U.S. citizens, we have to choose something better. And if you like the content, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.